What's up, YouTube? This is Stellar Toad, and today I'm going to be talking about telekinesis. I've recently made some progress in telekinesis. That being, I can now finally do it. Before, last video I made, I knew how it worked, but I was not, I was not able to do it. Uh, I made a video called Psychokinesis. Yeah. Anyway, so... I'm going to tell you how to do te uh, telekinesis. Uh, I'm not going to put me doing telekinesis in the video because the government, honestly. I don't want to like get arrested or something because I know that's happened to some people. I don't know. I don't know if that fear is valid or not, but anyway, yeah. I might change my mind and do the video with uh, the teapot, the glass French press thing over the psi wheel, which is the thing on the needle that turns. So that way the air wouldn't get it in the teapot and everything. So I might do a video on that. But anyway, yeah, this is how you do telekinesis. This is how you do telekinesis, okay? So first you're going to start by uh, kind of bringing your energy up, okay? So you can do that by moving around and kind of just getting your heart going and uh, doing something kind of athletic to raise energy. Um, because when you do those things, a lot of the time it'll make your energy flow faster, your uh, chi energy. Well, chi and prana are actually the opposite thing. It's a lot like electricity. One of them is uh, the negative and one of them is the positive because duality exists in all dimensions. But, anyway. Depending on whether you bring your energy from the top up or the bottom down, you'll either be pulling or pushing energy uh, when you try to do telekinesis. So if you bring your energy from the top down, like what I normally do, I normally go from the top down when I do my energy. Um, well, that's just how my energy actually naturally flows, but I know other people's energy flows from the bottom up. Um, you're going to actually loop the energy to where when it goes down, it's going to come, the energy is going to come back up in a, a magnetic field shape, like a donut, like a big donut kind of, or a ring magnet, and it's going to come back through the top and go down again. And every time it goes out, it's going to be pulling more energy from the air. And the energy is going to be coming back into you. And you should be able to see a white film right about here. Or further or closer. It depends. Uh, not really white. but depends on what color your energy naturally is. But anyway, you should be able to see some kind of film if you focus with your third eye that is forming around you when you do this. Um, and basically you're just going to do that for a little while just to raise enough energy and then you're going to cap the energy in. You're going to close it inside yourself, okay? Um, actually, you don't really need to do that. In fact, I've done it with, it. Wor I think it works better without doing that. So, actually, making this video brought that to my attention. Yeah, you don't really need to cap it inside yourself. You can just keep it flowing and then redirect it when you want to push energy or pull energy, depending on which way you have the energy flowing, up or down. Um, and basically, what you're going to do is you're going to focus on an object, okay? But it depends on the state of mind you're in, and I'm going to tell you about this, okay? Material things live in the third dimension, okay? That's where material things are. Okay, naturally, in the third, okay, in other videos I've mentioned that uh, the chakras are like dimensions and the third chakra or the solar plexus would be the third dimension. That's not true. Um, actually, there are chakras below the root chakra that are black, with black energy. Um, the root chakra is actually the third dimension. So, you have chakras below the third dimension, which are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, okay? 
to, no, I didn't do that right. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so that means nine chakras, nine nine dimensions. From the emerald tablets, you you might know that there are nine dimensions. So, anyway, you have to bring your consciousness into the third dimension in order to move things within the third dimension. You have to vibrate on their same level. And I know that, and I've known that for a long time because this lady that was sitting on a silver spinning wheel in space told me one time about the Akashic Records and how by using them and entering lower dimensions, you can operate on the same level as those things and have telepathy and have telekinesis and all that. And my intuition tells me I was actually talking to Mary from the Bible. That's what I think it was, but it could be because she looked spot on like the paintings. So it might not be intuition, it could just be my mind. Anyway, yeah, so you have to operate on the same level as the object. So to do that, you're not going to get angry or get mad or anything, or uh, lower your vibration in the normal sense. You're going to lower your vibration in the actual sense. I have to explain this, okay? My whole view of dimensions change. Don't, don't sniff me. Don't sniff me, that means you're going to try to pee. That's my dog. He just peed on that post. So anyway, you have to lower your mind into lower vibrations. So basically, it what keeps people from doing telekinesis most of the time, from what I see, and aerokinesis, which is what I'm basically good at. Um... It's that they're too high. They're, they're getting too high. They need to get low. And I mean that in the best sense, okay? This is what I mean, okay? Normally our minds are operating beyond the third dimension that we live in. And that's a bit too much. It's, it's a bit too much going on. It's a bit too complex. It doesn't doesn't correlate with the third dimension. So a lot of the time, our mind won't be able to manipulate this dimension. A lot of, a lot of the time, New Age people like Aaron Dowdy and... Uh, uh, other people that I'm sure exist say that the third dimension is separation and you're trying to transcend the third dimension beyond separation and then you're all one and whatever and blah 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 so anyway no uh, it's not like that in fact the third dimension is not the dimension of separation every dimension is the well the let me rephrase that the third dimension is the dimension of separation but it's not the dimension of duality. Every dimension in the universe is the dimension of duality. Uh, there is yin and yang in all planes of this universe. Astral plane, beyond that fourth dimension, the angelic plane, all the dimensions, okay? All the way up to nine before you just exit the universe. All the dimensions have duality, okay? They all have yin and yang. And within any of these dimensions, you can be operating with in yin or yang or balance, okay? You don't want to be happy all the time because you know people with manic depression who will be very, 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 very happy. Then they'll be really, really, really sad. Well, that's how karma works. You get happy, you get a little high, and then you get a little low. Then you get a little high, and then you get a little low. All the time, okay? That's karma. So how yin and yang works is by, I mean, how balance works is by balancing between yin and yang, or the positive and the negative that exists in all planes of the universe, okay? But, okay, this is the thing. You, When you bring yourself down to the third dimension level, or the root chakra, you're not lowering your vibration or uh, 
negativating. Ne that's not a word. You're not making your mood negative. You're not making yourself negative, actually. In fact, you're just simplifying your mind. Lower dimensions aren't inherently bad like Aaron Doughty and other people kind of associate them with. It's just that they're simpler. They're much simpler. In fact, you might find it easier when you're in a very meditative state of mind with very little thoughts to manipulate the wind. I just made some wind. It just a breeze blew by. Okay. Or to manipulate objects when your mind is very simple. A lot of the time people will try to do telekinesis and they're, they'll just be just and kind of straining their mind like their mind is constipated. Um, and really you don't need to do any of that. In order to do telekinesis, you just need to stop and take a break and just focus. It's it's easy. It's easy. Moving an object is easy, okay? I actually showed my mom that I was able to move the paper for it to fall on my hand by just moving my hand this much. Didn't create any wind. I was indoors. Everyone was standing still, and I moved the paper. And so anyway... That was easy. It was just getting into the right state of mind to do it that was a bit difficult. I had to lower my vibration. So now I'm going to talk about uh, actually how you do it. Now that I've now that I've kind of ranted on for a few good minutes, how you do it is you're just going to focus, and you're going to get your energy flowing to where it's flowing very quickly. Okay, get your energy flowing really really quickly, and Get it very, very dense. Get your energy denser to where you can manipulate denser things. Just get the energy dense. You might see it as black or white or blue or whatever. It depends on your aura, but yeah. You could see it as any of those things. Hang on. I'm going to see if I can do something real quick. Okay, anyway, so I wasn't able, I'm not really able to control where I make wind. That didn't sound, that, that, you know what I meant, okay? I'm not really able to control where the wind goes. I was trying to make that tree right there blow in the wind. Uh, and instead I just made a breeze right where I am. And in fact, I just, the breeze is still going and now I'm cold. But anyway, yeah. How you do it is you just simplify your mind to the third dimension, you focus, and beyond that, it's very instinctive of how you move objects. It's a pull and a push. It's really easy. So, and that applies to all aspects of psychokinesis. You just need to lower your vibration to whatever you're trying to move in this dimension. That's why it's so easy to look at the ether in the air, or the Higgs field, and, and you're able to manipulate it to move back and forth and you're able to densify it into a dragon ball uh, like in Qigong but it's not as easy to actually use that ether to manipulate objects because you're just too high you need to get low to manipulate things that are low okay yeah so that's how you do telekinesis, and I know for a fact there are going to be people in the comments who say, because I didn't show them, that they don't believe me, and that is a good thing, because a lot of these people will tell you, oh, you need to believe, you need to have faith, you need to, you need to believe that it works in order for it to work. Well, then how do I know that it's not a placebo? Seriously, that doesn't make any sense at all, okay? How do I know anything is not a placebo if I have to have faith in it? I need to experience it firsthand in order to know. Just like the thing in the 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 little 
PSI wheel in the, uh, what's it called? A teapot. I need to actually experience it in order to know. I should be able to do this and be skeptical about it, and it still works in order for me to believe. And you can do that with telekinesis. You don't have to always believe 100%. You can bring your energy, and you can focus and bring yourself into the third dimension, and it'll still instinctively manipulate the object. Be skeptical, okay? Be Have a balanced pu viewpoint, but, but don't be um, cynical, okay? Don't be to where you directly don't believe it, but still try to do it. Because if you directly disbelieve telekinesis and try to do it, it won't work. But if you have a balanced viewpoint and you're skeptical of it, but believe that it could work, then it will work, okay? But I don't want you to believe me. Just try it, okay? Uh, it's not easy. You won't get it on your first try or anything. You'll have to try for a good 20 minutes to get it to move a little bit, okay? But after you get the mindset down, it's easy to continue to mo manipulate it. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. This is Stellar Totally uh, Mosquito. This is Stellar Toad. Leave a like, subscribe, and a comment. I hope you enjoyed the video. Goodbye. Subscribe. And also leave a comment.